my um, grandson um, last year was uh, moved without my knowledge. Uh, the CPTSW worker had um, not contacted me. Thank you. All righty. Let's take another quick call from uh, Fatima in California. Patricia in California. Patricia, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Hello, to, um, Mr. Vincent. Hello to you both and uh, Miss G. I sure appreciate your show and uh, your time. Uh, I have a couple of things that's going on with me. My um, grandson, um, Last year was uh, moved without my knowledge. Uh, the CPTSW worker had um, not contacted me verbally or written confirmation or anything of that purpose. She just did what she did without uh, consenting me. I'm the paternal grandmother. I've been in my grandson's life since he was a small baby. And um, it is just terrible. This had happened, and I um, want him, you know, placed with me, but um, I just have a lot of issues, a lot of suspicious activity, and questionable concessions had occurred through um, um, this um, move without my knowledge. And I wanted to ask you, Mr. Benson, what um, I'm able to do to um, have him possibly immediately placed with me um, in my home. I've been RFA approved by the state of California, and I don't know what is um, what is I need to do to pursue uh, my endeavors. Okay, so. Uh, generally speaking, and this may vary depending on the stage of the case, but generally speaking, you're going to have to probably get an attorney, file what's called a 388 petition, and file what's called a de facto motion, and perhaps even a presumed parent motion, and you're going to have to file a petition, an 827 petition, to get a copy of the legal file because it is confidential even though you're the grandmother. And you said it's a 387? Uh, no, 388 petition. Mm -hmm. Okay. A de facto motion. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a presumed parent motion. Mm -hmm. And in what they call an 827 petition. Okay. All right. And you're going to have to get those in now. Uh, have an attorney help you at least or prepare them for you uh, so that you can file with um, the judge or with the clerk of the court. Yes, yeah, this, this case um, is in a juvenile court. Um, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot. Um, though this case is that is some other things that's going on in in that uh, upper area of um, Antelope Valley, um, Lancaster area. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot that went on in that uh, area that was not um, um, was um, going on in the, in that area um, with a, a different case beside mine, and it was not um, a good thing that happened. So um, I just tried to two minutes um, do the right thing in the right manner in the right order. Okay. Well, you know what? The other thing you should probably do, so I can give. You get some more information and talk to you a little bit more about it is give me a call on Monday or Tuesday at my office, 888 and we can talk more in depth as to these other things. It's just that, you know, there's a radio show, we have limited time, there's commercials all the time. I just got a message, we got to go take another break for commercials. So call me at the office, we'll have more time uh, to speak. Okay? Well, I yes, sir. I do appreciate you, Mr. Mr. Vincent and Ms. Ms. Georgia, I do appreciate you both for your time and, and service. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Thank you for listening. Call us back in about three or four weeks and update the uh, audience as to what has happened, okay? Thank you, Patricia. This is The Secret, How to Fight CPS and Win. We'll be right back after these messages.